My workstation consists of a 2021 MacBook Pro with an M1 Max processor, which runs three 5K Thunderbolt displays and occasionally an additional 4K display over HDMI. According to Apple, this is the upper limit of external display support for this MacBook Pro, but is it really? In this video, I'm going to see just how far I can push this machine with some surprising results. Before we get into that, I want to address the question of why Mac users would want to run an expensive 5K display when 4K displays are so much more readily available and so much cheaper. Apple has always been consistent with the expected size of on-screen interface elements, such that the default size of icons in Finder is about 15mm wide. To achieve this, before the advent of Retina or high DPI displays, Max would have a pixel density of somewhere between 110 and 135 pixels per inch, or PPI, such that no matter what Mac you used, the interface elements would appear approximately the same size regardless of the actual dimensions of the display. When Retina came along, it was implemented in a very similar manner to the difference between 1080p Full HD and 2160p 4K, in that the same image would be displayed but the pixel density is doubled in both horizontal and vertical dimensions. Apple Retina displays have a pixel density of somewhere in the region of 218 to 254 pixels per inch, effectively doubling the non-Retina resolution. If you render the interface using the same number of pixels per interface element as is used on non-Retina displays, you end up with an absolutely vast amount of interface space, but the interface elements are tiny so instead the interface elements are doubled in size. Therefore, a Finder icon from a non-Retina Mac with a size of 64 by 64 pixels would be represented by 128 by 128 pixels on a Retina Mac, but would occupy the same amount of physical space on the display. The result is the same amount of available screen space as a non-Retina display, but with crisper text and smoother graphics. This requirement for consistent pixel density is the reason why Apple doesn't put 4K displays into MacBooks. The pixel density would be too large and interface elements would appear too small on screen. In fact, in order to get the correct pixel density for 4K, you need a 20 inch display, which leads us to the reason why a 27 inch 4K display is not ideal for a Mac. At 27 inches, the pixel density for a 3840 by 2160 4K display is just 163 ppi, which is far less than the Retina standard, and as a result, the interface elements will appear far bigger than those on a MacBook or iMac display. This is particularly noticeable when moving windows between displays in a setup with both a MacBook and a 4K display, as the window will suddenly appear to grow hugely as it moves over onto the 4K display. Now it is possible to use what macOS calls a scaled resolution on a 4K display in order to have the interface elements appear at the correct size, but there are two disadvantages to doing this. Firstly, the interface elements won't be as sharp as on a genuine Retina display because the system is having to use fewer pixels to represent those elements than it would on a genuine Retina display, and secondly, because the system is having to render versions of the interface elements scaled by an arbitrary factor rather than doing the very simple pixel doubling of Retina, system performance can be affected. To achieve the Retina pixel density of 218 ppi on a 27 inch display, you need a pixel resolution of 5120 by 2880 or 5K, which is what was used by the iMac Retina 5K, the Apple Studio Display, and the LG Ultrafine 5K, along with a small selection of more recent 5K displays, such as the ASUS ProArt PA27JCV. The 32-inch Apple Pro Display XDR also has the correct Retina pixel density of 218 ppi by employing a massive 6016x3384 6K panel. Of course, the Pro Display XDR also has an equally colossal sticker price, so for most people who want a large external display for their Mac, 27-inch 5K displays are the sweet spot. When my MacBook Pro was released in 2021, the only 5K display available was the LG Ultrafine 5K, which uses the same panel as the 2014 iMac Retina 5K. 
The Ultrafine 5K connects to the Mac using Thunderbolt, and its huge 5120x2880 pixel 10-bit color 60Hz display gobbles over 33 gigabits per second of bandwidth, almost saturating the 40 gigabits per second limit of Thunderbolt 3 and 4. Consequently, each one of these displays must connect to its own Thunderbolt port, and as the MacBook Pro has three ports, this means you can connect a maximum of three ultrafine 5Ks, and I think that's where Apple's external display specification for the M1 Max comes from. While on the face of it, the LG Ultrafine 5K and the Apple Studio display are very similar, with a 27-inch 5K panel, connection via Thunderbolt, and three downstream USB-C ports, there is one crucial difference that's not very well documented. The difference comes down to the version of the DisplayPort protocol in use by each display. The Ultrafine 5K uses DisplayPort 1.2, which actually only supports 4K resolution at 60Hz, so behind the scenes the 5K signal is split over two DisplayPort 1.2 channels, which are then stitched together by the display to make the final 5K output. The newer Apple Studio display makes use of DisplayPort 1.4, which supports much higher resolutions, but it also supports DSC, or Display Stream Compression, which allows even higher display resolutions with a much lower data rate. In fact, DSC allows for a 3 to 1 compression ratio, so the Apple Studio display manages to run using just a fraction of the Thunderbolt bandwidth used by the LG Ultrafine 5K. In order to run the Ultrafine 5K, each Thunderbolt port on the Mac must support at least two DisplayPort channels and 40 gigabits per second of data, so theoretically, we should be able to connect a Thunderbolt hub to one port on the Mac and have it run two studio displays, right? In fact, this configuration I'm running right now has an Ultrafine 5K running on one Thunderbolt port and two studio displays running through a hub on a second Thunderbolt port, reaching the published external display limit for the M1 Max with a Thunderbolt port left unoccupied. When using three Ultrafine 5K displays, the Mac has to employ six DisplayPort channels, but in this configuration I'm using two for the Ultrafine 5K and one each for the two studio displays, so theoretically I still have two channels available to send to the remaining Thunderbolt port. Let's connect another Ultrafine 5K to that port and see what happens. Et voila! We now have four 5K Thunderbolt displays running from my MacBook Pro in excess of the three that Apple says is the maximum but now I'm using all three ports on my MacBook, so I had to find out if I could run four displays using just two ports. So, after an alarmingly few clicks and just a few hours, two more studio displays arrived, ready for testing. The plan is to connect two Thunderbolt 4 hubs to my Mac and have two studio displays hanging off each hub for a total of four studio displays occupying just two ports from the Mac. So, with four studio displays connected to the Fusion Dock, what do we get? Success! Although my desk is a mess, I am now running four 5K studio displays from just two Thunderbolt ports on my Mac. Let's just recap the current configuration. This M1 Max MacBook has three Thunderbolt 4 ports, each supporting 40 gigabits per second transfer rate and the M1 Max can drive at least six DisplayPort channels. We know this because we've seen it drive two studio displays, which use one channel each, and two Ultrafine 5K displays, which use two channels each, simultaneously. Therefore, with four studio displays hanging off two Thunderbolt 4 ports, there is a spare Thunderbolt port and two remaining DisplayPort channels. So if we can run two studio displays or a single Ultrafine 5K from one Thunderbolt port, and we've only used four DisplayPort channels to run four studio displays from two ports, could we use the remaining two DisplayPort channels with the remaining Thunderbolt port to drive even more displays? Let's see what happens if I connect an Ultrafine 5K to the remaining port. Nothing. The display doesn't fire up. Interestingly, if I inspect the Thunderbolt section of the system report, it can see the Ultrafine 5K connected, but it's not going to pass display data to it. If I disconnect one of the studio displays, the Ultrafine starts working, and then if I reconnect that studio display, 
it won't operate as a display either until I disconnect the UltraFine. Apple says it's possible to run three Thunderbolt displays plus a 4K display over HDMI, so let's see if the HDMI resources are somehow being reused to drive my fourth Thunderbolt display by connecting a 4K HDMI display. And sure enough, the HDMI display does not activate, so that would seem to indicate that the fourth Thunderbolt display is indeed using the resources that would otherwise have been allocated to the HDMI display. Therefore, it's reasonable to say that four Thunderbolt displays is the absolute maximum for the M1 Max in this MacBook, and likely any other Apple Silicon Max processors, including the M2 Max, M3 Max, and M4 Max. Connecting a fifth Thunderbolt or HDMI display won't break anything, but it won't actually use that fifth unit as a display until one of the other displays is disconnected. But that's not to take away from the incredible external display abilities of this MacBook Pro. We've seen it run four 5K Apple Studio displays over two Thunderbolt ports, and as these work because of display stream compression, it's reasonable to assume that this M1 Max could also run four massive 6K Pro Display XDRs using those same two ports. And for a 14-inch laptop, that's frankly staggering.